Sister Young, when were you arrested? It was September 11th, 2018. I heard you served as a church leader at the time. Can you describe the scene of the actual arrest? It was 6 a.m. that morning, and I was still asleep, when suddenly I heard this pounding on the door. I hadn't really come to when seven or eight policemen burst in and yanked the bedding off of me. Uh, they kicked away two other sisters. Then they took videos and photos of us. They searched and found a receipt for $90,000 of church offerings, over 6,000 in cash offerings and 900 belonging to a sister. There were also four laptops, cell phones, and some other things. After that, they took us to a hotel where they separated us for questioning. They kept demanding to know what my pseudonym was. And I was thinking to myself that the receipt had my signature on it. If I told them my pseudonym, they'd demand to know where to find the offerings. I couldn't tell them. When I didn't speak, they took some papers they rolled into a tube and then started whacking me on the mouth, chin, and neck really hard. Seeing how vicious they were was really frightening. I prayed to God over and over, asking him to watch over me and stop my fear of Satan. I remembered some words from God. Those in power may seem vicious from the outside, but do not be afraid. It's only because you have little faith. As long as your faith grows, nothing will be too difficult. God's words gave me faith. The police were in God's hands, so they couldn't do anything to me without God's permission. I didn't feel as nervous or scared anymore. The police kept on interrogating me, but I didn't say anything. I heard they tried brainwashing you too. Yes. At first, they were just playing videos full of lies and slander about the Church of Almighty God. I knew the videos were nothing but lies, so it didn't affect me. About two, uh, two weeks later, they started playing the TV series Lecture Room about Confucianism and then put on lectures from university professors and psychologists, barraging me with atheist ideas. It was nauseating. I didn't want to hear another word. The more they used those tactics, the clearer it was for me that the CCP has been lying. It's an anti-God demon. The brainwashing didn't work, so they must have tried other things, too. Yes. The police started interrogating me again and again. During an interrogation, an officer said, You're not bad looking. Want to spend the night with me? Why don't you be one of my mistresses? And I'll make sure you get whatever you want. Disgusted and outraged, I glared at him. Then they made me stand, facing the wall. And an officer said, Hey, self-reflecting? Then he lied down on a bed in the room, smiled lewdly, and told me to take a nap with him. I was absolutely furious and nauseated and didn't respond. He then got up and started pulling on my clothing, and then jabbing me in the waist and in the chest with his phone. I lost my cool and shoved at his arm, yelling, You have no shame! Then he got back on the bed, cursing and playing with his phone. I had never thought that the police could be so vulgar and so vile. Were they even human? Weren't they degenerates? Before, it seemed like something honorable whenever the people's police came up. But when I was arrested, I saw how filthy and immoral they are. Then, the police threatened me, saying, if you don't confess, we'll take you to a detention house. It smells horrible in those places, and everyone gets scabies. They're violent. They'll make you sleep by the toilet. You'll have to collect the most vile garbage. And some of the inmates use others' face cloths for their menstrual blood. It's disgusting. Hearing them say this did frighten me. And I thought about how many brothers and sisters, 
had been tortured after being arrested. I could go to prison and face all of that. Since the Communist Party sees believers as major targets and doesn't treat us like humans and uses cell bosses in order to abuse us believers, I definitely go through a lot. But upon reflection, I realized this was a trick of Satan. Their goal in saying this was to scare me and to get me to betray God. I couldn't fall for Satan's trick. Then I recalled God's words. Faith is like a single log bridge. Cling to life in fear and you'll fall. But be ready to perish and you'll pass over. It's true. What do I have to fear with God at my side? If I need to go to prison, even if it costs my life, I won't betray God. When I didn't respond, they made me keep standing there. Only letting me rest around 2 a.m. After 14 or 15 hours. My legs and feet were swollen and my back was in really terrible pain. I heard they used all sorts of other torture methods on you, like standing on clothes hangers, electric shocks, and water torture. Yes. I remember clearly. They took me into a room at about 11 p.m. on the 27th, where I saw a basin of water and an electric baton being charged. Realizing they were planning on torturing me was terrifying. I prayed to God over and over. God, please protect me. No matter how Satan tortures me, I'll stand witness and won't betray you. Then an officer came in with a couple of clothes hangers, hooked the two pairs of metal clothing clips to each other, then put them under my feet and made me stand on them barefoot. Then they got a towel they stuffed into my mouth and handcuffed my arms behind me. The hangers really dug into my feet, and I could not take it after a few minutes. My feet really hurt. But if I moved even a little bit, they'd start shouting, Be still! Don't move! I was in agony. I could only bite the towel and bear it. Every minute, every second, was pure misery. Uh, they didn't take the hangers away until two hours later. Then one of the officers turned on the baton and said, So what is your pseudonym? Are you a leader? This baton has been used on murderers and rapists. If you don't tell us, we're using it on you today. Then another asked, Are you Yang Lian? I shook my head. They got angry and grabbed me by the hair, then forced my face into the basin of water. I couldn't get any air. I couldn't breathe. I was on the verge of suffocating. I struggled with all my might and knocked the basin over. They picked it up, refilled it, and dunked me again. I knocked it over repeatedly. Every time my head barely left the basin, they forced my face back before I caught my breath. It went just like this, over and over leaving me soaked from head to foot. Water covered the floor. About 40 minutes later, they had me sit on the floor against the wall. They brought two chairs and used them to splay my legs. One kept demanding to know, are you Yang Lian? I shook my head. Furious, he put the electric baton to my mouth, saying sinisterly, speak up or get shocked. He pressed the power button. A jolt of electricity went from my lips to my cheeks, numbing and painful. I shook my head to escape. They shocked me several times. Then they started on my stomach, my waist, my back, and my feet. They shocked me everywhere. And my entire body was shaking. The place is shocked by the baton hurt a lot. I fought hard as I could. They held me down tightly, and I couldn't avoid it. Shocking me, they said, if you don't talk, we'll kill you. Then 
I heard one of them say, get her in the crotch. One of them grabbed the baton and started shocking me in the groin, the buttocks, and the chest. Over a dozen times. I was crying out from the pain, but they didn't care at all. This went on for about 40 minutes before they stopped. My whole body was in unbearable pain. And I was furious. Each of those monsters was more evil than the last. They were beasts in human form. They claim the police are the servants of the people. But I could see they were evil spirits from hell. I didn't know how long they were going to torture me. So I just kept calling out to God, begging him to watch over me so I wouldn't be a Judas. I remembered God said, the utmost faith and love are required from us in this stage of work. We may stumble from the slightest carelessness, for this stage of work is different from all the previous ones. What God is perfecting is mankind's faith, which is both invisible and intangible. What God does is convert words to faith, to love, and to life. I pondered this and realized that God allowed the great red dragon to persecute me to perfect my faith. It was so I could stand witness for God and shame Satan through this trial. No matter how they tortured and humiliated me, I was determined not to give in. After 20 minutes, an officer grabbed onto my hair. I sat on the floor with hands cuffed behind my back and he really roughly dragged me to the bathroom by the hair and made me lie under the shower. One of them held my feet down while another folded up a few napkins, soaked them and put them over my mouth and nose. I couldn't move or breathe. I was suffocating. I yanked my head away as hard as I could and got them to fall. Then they soaked another pile of napkins and put them back on. With great effort, I chewed through them. We kept going through this for 20 minutes or so. They finally stopped when they'd used up the box of napkins. Then they got a towel and folded it, soaked it and stuck it over my nose and mouth. One of them held it down, while another sprayed water onto it from the shower head. It lasted very long. I was choking and couldn't even breathe. I felt like I was going to suffocate. One officer then said, I am going to kill you. All I could do was struggle with all of my might. I even wet my pants. I felt like I was about to die. I couldn't take it anymore. I was praying to God nonstop. Gradually, I lost the strength to keep fighting. I stopped struggling and they removed the towel. Before I caught my breath, they turned me over and had me lie on my stomach, then dunked my head into a basin of water. They did this over and over, nonstop. I was able to struggle a little bit but then I lost all strength. I had reached my limit. They then pulled my head out. That lasted for half an hour. They kept asking me what my name was or if I was a leader. I said nothing. Then an officer picked a wet towel up off the ground and stuffed it in my mouth. So far back it was in my throat, but I gagged it out. He stuffed another one into my mouth. Again, I gagged it out. He yelled at me angrily. How dare you? I'm going to pee on this towel and stuff it down your mouth. My friend's on her period. She'll wipe her ass with it and then you'll lick it off. His words really scared me. I didn't dare let myself gag anymore. Before the towel hit my throat, 
I bit down on it. And then, as if they'd lost their minds, they jabbed me all over with the electric baton, viciously, holding it against me longer with every shock. About mm, four to ten seconds. Shocking me over and over again. This went on until 4 a.m. I was in pain all over. I just sat on the floor, panting. I couldn't lift my head or open my eyes. Exhausted and in great pain. My clothing was completely soaking wet. I was freezing cold. But the officers still did not let up. They had me sit in a chair. I couldn't lean my head against anything. When they still could not get me to talk, they then said, if you stay this stubborn, we will start again. You must have felt some weakness in this situation, correct? Mm. Back in the room, I saw myself in the mirror. It was frightening. My lips were so swollen. About a quarter of my hair was missing. My hands and wrists looked like bread rolls. And my body was covered in bruises. There were some burns on my stomach from the baton. My back hurt so much that I couldn't manage to bend over. Lying in bed, I didn't dare move. Everywhere was hurting. It was painful. Before sunrise, images of torture circled through my mind. I was terrified. They were brutal. If they did do it again, I'd be unable to take it. They came to question me at 3 p.m., telling me to confirm the descriptions and pseudonyms of my fellow sisters. Then I thought, they've been detained. Maybe I could acknowledge it. Who knows how much more they're going to torture me. And if it's anything like last night, I won't be able to take it. I'll probably die in here. I nodded, confirming their info. After that, I realized I had done something foolish. In such a short time, how could I have sold out those sisters? Did that make me a Judas? I was filled with regret and guilt. Then one of the officers asked me, how and where do you transfer the church funds? I said, I've told you everything there is. I don't know. He shot back, how do you not know? We're far from finished here. We have plenty more questions. They asked me several more times, but I denied all. Then an officer pointed at the room where they had tortured me and said furiously, that room's been cleaned up, we can start now. We had one baton before, now there's two. Then another officer started charging the batons, had me stand on the hangers again, and stuffed a towel into my mouth. I was in pain from head to toe. Standing made my legs tremble. It lasted over an hour. Then they let me go back to my room. Then at 10 p.m., a few officers took me for interrogation. One asked, do you want to go to the left or the right? My heart leapt into my throat. I knew that the room on my left meant talking, the right meant pain. I felt like there was no escaping those demons. They were bound to kill me. Thinking about how the police had tortured me left me feeling weak. I was terrified of that room. So what decision did you make? I was silent. He saw me hesitate and then said, go, the left room. Inside they showed me a few photos 
that had me and some sisters in them, and said to write their names to confirm their IDs. I wondered, if I did that, would that be selling them out? I couldn't do it. But if I refused to, they would take me to the other room and torture me. I wasn't even steady on my feet. If they tortured me like they had the night before, it had cost me my life. I thought, forget it. I'll sign. I already confirmed what the arrested sisters look like anyway. At that thought, I wrote their names. The police then told me to confirm if one of them was a church leader. Seeing how relentless Satan was, I hesitated. Could I tell them? I then urgently called out to God. Oh God, what should I do? Oh God, please help and guide me. I suddenly remembered words from God. God says, Toward those who showed me not the slightest loyalty during times of tribulation, I shall be merciful no more, for my mercy only extends so far. I have no liking, furthermore, for anyone who has once betrayed me. Much less do I like to associate with those who sell out the interests of their friends. This is my disposition, regardless of who the person may be. God's words jolted through me, and I snapped out of it. God's disposition will tolerate no offense. Selling out other people was betraying God. I was knocking on the door to hell. I felt really terrified. I put the pen down and said, I refuse. I'm not selling anyone out. They tried over and over to entice me into it. That's not selling out. We said all of this. You didn't say it. You just need to write it down. I then thought, this time, I absolutely will not fall for Satan's trick. I said, I refuse. After that, they took me into the room on the right, and they used the hangers. Then they brought me to the basin and were about to dunk my head. When one of them said, are you going to talk? I kept silent and thought, I'd rather die. They plunged my head in the water and I fought with everything I had. I wouldn't stay still. They brought me back to the hangars and then they started to shock me all over my legs and stomach because I didn't answer. Then a little past 1 a.m. They saw that I wouldn't budge and said I had to leave the church and give up my faith. They said to me, give it some thought, we'll talk later. If you don't agree, we'll keep going. Then we have the next day and the next day. Being threatened by them yet again must have been really frightening for you. What I felt even more than fear, was deep regret and self-reproach. I deeply hated myself for having confirmed the photos of all those sisters and just wanted to smack myself. If it hadn't been for God's words, I would have given in to Satan and kept selling them out. Wasn't I a Judas? I also wondered, why did I admit those things? Was I just afraid to die? I was so worried that I would die if they tortured me. So instead I sold them all out. Even though they'd been arrested with me, the police already knew their descriptions and pseudonyms. I shouldn't have given them that confirmation. In that spiritual battle, God was watching me. Satan was too. This was a test but I had sold them out. In shame, I lost my testimony. Lord Jesus once said, Fear not them which kill the body, but not the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. For whoever will save his life shall then lose it. Whoever will lose his life for me shall then find it. Truly, 
Our lives are in God's hands. Whether I can survive the demon's lair was up to God. Like Job when he was being tested, Satan couldn't take Job's life without God's permission. But I didn't have true faith in God. I valued my life and couldn't risk it. I thought that confirming the photos meant I would escape death. How could I have been so dumb? If I had died for standing witness, I would be a martyr, but my soul wouldn't die. Yearning for life would make me a Judas. Then even if my body lived, in God's eyes, I may as well be dead. I'd have a mark of shame. I'd never know peace. And I would go down to hell when I died. I had seen what true life really is, as well as true death. I really hated myself. I didn't have a conscience. I was so despicable. Feeling so much regret, I silently prayed to God. God, I was wrong. I don't want to make more mistakes. If you give me a chance, I will put my life on the line to stand witness and humiliate Satan. Did they keep interrogating you after that? Mm. They came to question me the next evening, still wanting me to sign the guarantee that I'd leave the church. I had not stood witness before, but I was a cowardly Judas. This time, I was determined not to fail God. I firmly said to the police, I believe in the one true God who created everything, the Savior. My faith is right and true, and I will never ever give it up. Seeing how resolute I was, they just sent me back to my room. I was so full of gratitude and praise for God then. I thought they'd torture me when I did not sign the paper. But instead, they just let me go back. I knew this was God's mercy and care for me. He had compassion for my weakness. At about 8 a.m. the next day, an officer brought over the sisters I'd been arrested with. I saw them standing at the door with their clothes. The officer said, These two? Already spoke up. Their families are on the way to pick them up. You're the last. Want to go home? I'll give you one last chance. Do you want your faith or to go home? I saw the police still weren't giving up. So I said firmly, my faith. He yelled angrily, then off to jail. He then took the other two sisters off in a huff. I was really miserable as I watched them go. I longed for freedom. I didn't want to be there for another second. I wondered when I'd get out. I started to feel weak. Tears began to flow. I then quickly prayed to God about my state and recalled God's words. You think of all the grace you have gained. You have heard so many of my words. Could you have listened to them in vain? No matter who runs away, you cannot. Other people do not believe, but you must. Other people abandon God, but you must uphold God and bear witness to him. Others slander God but you cannot. I thought about this and understood God's will. It's true. Why would my faith be influenced by others? I had to submit to whatever God arranged. Even if someone lost faith, God was still my God. I couldn't stop believing. I knew God was testing me and it was a temptation Satan put me through. Satan is a trickster and wanted me to betray God. God was seeing if I could stay faithful, even in that environment. I gave thanks to God. I understood God's will. I no longer felt weak. I heard the police kept trying to force you to sign that guarantee. How did you handle that? Mm. The police detained me for using a cult organization to disturb social order. 
They questioned me after taking me to the police station, saying, My boss wanted me to come see you now. And if you sign that you're not religious and that you won't deal with church members, you can go home. I knew this was one of Satan's temptations. I couldn't let God down. Signing that guarantee would be betraying God, and that would mean the mark of the beast. I said to them firmly, you don't need to waste your energy on me. I will never sign that. One of them responded, that's fine. Go to prison. You'll get 10 years. I'll make sure it's not easy. I said, okay. Then another one said, Can you just tell us what you're really thinking now? I knew that God was watching me. He was listening. Satan was too. I adamantly said, I follow Almighty God, the one true God. I will believe in Him with no regrets. They wouldn't give up, but said all sorts of things to try to get me to sign it, even though I refused to. They were absolutely furious and shouted, there's nothing more to say to you, go to prison. I really felt delighted and at peace when I saw them leave in anger. I had risked my life to stand on the side of God. I was really surprised when, around 3 p.m., they said I would be detained for 14 days. I could hardly believe what I had heard. I was so moved that I kept thanking God. I really saw that Satan is in God's hands too. The police said I would get 10 years, but without God's permission, they couldn't do a thing to me. Then the police took me to the detention center where I saw the sisters I'd been arrested with. The police were lying when they said they were going home. The police have so many tricks. I kept thanking God for his protection, for guiding me to see through Satan's schemes and traps. The police questioned me again before my release. I just continued praying to God, asking him to keep me strong. They got my cell phone out and opened up some videos and photos of my husband and daughter, then said, want to go home? Then you need to do something, sign that guarantee and give up your religion. Satan was relentless. I thought, whether the police let me go or not, I'll never betray God. I said, keep it, I won't sign. They said, your faith makes you a felon. If you don't sign the paper, your kid won't be able to get into college or get any work. Why don't you think about her future? I knew that Satan was trying to tempt me into betraying God. Through that ordeal, I'd seen its evil face and all its ploys. I wouldn't fall for its tricks. I then said, my faith doesn't break the law. Why do you have to drag my child into this? God determines fates, so what happens in her life has already been set. No man can decide that. I will never sign that paper. Then one of them shouted furiously, You're so hopeless. They saw they weren't getting anywhere, so they stopped asking me. And after my 14 days were up, I was released. Thanks be to God. You learned many lessons from that experience of arrest and persecution. Mm. Thank God. The best thing I gained was truly seeing God's love and care for me. I was so cowardly, so afraid, so weak when tortured. But God was always by my side, helping me, guiding me with his words, giving me faith and strength. I was so timid and scared I'd sold out those sisters to protect myself, but God gave me a chance to repent, using his words to show me the way. When I was willing to stand witness for God, I saw his love and mercy for me again. I realized how lovely God is. I praise him from my heart. 
I've also seen through the Communist Party's savage and evil lessons. Its hatred of God knows no bounds. It would love to eradicate every single person of faith. The Communist Party is Satan working against God. I detest and reject it from the heart. And I'm firm in following God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.